Have you ever wondered how we evaluate the stability of emulsions and why stress testing is crucial in this process? Welcome to the fascinating world of emulsion stability and stress testing. This topic, despite its complexity, plays a pivotal role in various fields, from pharmaceuticals and food processing to cosmetics and paints. Emulsion stability refers to the ability of an emulsion to resist changes over time. But how do we exactly measure this stability? That's where stress testing comes into play. Through stress testing, we can simulate different conditions that an emulsion might encounter, allowing us to understand its behavior under various circumstances. In this video, we'll uncover how we evaluate emulsion stability through parameters like phase separation, pH, globule size, viscosity, and redisperability. Each of these factors provides us with a unique perspective into the stability of an emulsion. Now that we've set the stage, join us as we dive into the intricate process of evaluating emulsion stability. To begin with, we must first understand what emulsions are. Picture a cocktail of oil and water. You give it a good shake and voila, you've made um, an emulsion. But what exactly is an emulsion? Simply put, it's a mixture of two liquids that usually do not mix together. In our cocktail example, oil is dispersed as tiny droplets throughout the water, creating an unstable emulsion. And that's where the term oil and water emulsion comes from. There's also water and oil emulsion where water droplets are dispersed in oil. Now, you might be thinking, why does this matter? Well, uh, emulsions are everywhere around us. They're in our food, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, and even in the paint on our walls. Understanding emulsions is key to improving the products we use daily. However, emulsions are not fond of staying mixed for long. They tend to separate over time, which is where the term emulsion stability comes in. Stability refers to the capability of an emulsion to resist changes in its properties over time. The more stable an emulsion, the longer it stays mixed. But what makes an emulsion stable or unstable? It's a cocktail of factors, including the size of the droplets, the presence of emulsifiers, and the external conditions such as temperature and pressure. In a stable emulsion, the droplets are so small and so well dispersed that they resist coming together. Emulsifiers help in this by reducing the surface tension between the two liquids, making it easier for them to mix. But not all emulsions are made equal. Some are designed to be stable for a long time, while others are meant to break down under certain conditions. This makes the evaluation of emulsion stability a complex and fascinating field. With a clear understanding of emulsions, we are ready to explore the evaluation process. The first step in evaluating emulsion stability involves assessing phase separation. Phase separation is akin to an identity crisis in the world of emulsions. It's when the oil and water components, once harmoniously blended, decide to part ways. This separation can occur due to changes in temperature, pressure, or overtime, and it's a key indicator of emulsion stability. But why is it so important? Well, imagine an emulsion as a tight-knit community. When everyone gets along, the neighborhood thrives. But when disagreements arise and families start moving out, the community destabilizes. Similarly, a stable emulsion has its oil and water components evenly distributed, leading to a consistent product. But when phase separation occurs, this uniformity is disrupted, potentially affecting the product's performance. Now, how do we evaluate phase separation? The process is quite intriguing. One common method is the centrifugation test, where the emulsion is spun at high speeds. This motion encourages phase separation, enabling us to observe how quickly and to what extent the components separate. Another approach is the freeze-thaw cycle test. Here, the emulsion is subjected to alternating freezing and thawing conditions, mimicking real-world temperature fluctuations. If the emulsion remains stable throughout these cycles, it's a good sign that it can withstand varied conditions. There's also the creaming index test, where the emulsion is left undisturbed for a certain period. The separation of oil and water components forms distinct layers, which can be measured to determine the extent of phase separation. Each of these tests provides a unique perspective on phase separation, helping us understand how robust an emulsion is and how it might behave under different conditions. However, phase separation isn't the be-all and end-all of emulsion stability. It's a critical aspect, yes, but there are other factors at play too, like pH, globule size, and viscosity. Phase separation provides valuable insights into emulsion stability, but it's just one piece of the puzzle. Scene script. Next, we turn our attention to three other critical parameters pH, globule size, and viscosity. Let's start with pH. 
The pH of an emulsion plays a vital role in determining its stability. It influences the degree of ionization of the surfactant, which in turn affects the surface tension and hence the stability of the emulsion. To evaluate the pH, a calibrated pH meter is used. The pH is adjusted using either an acid or a base and the stability of the emulsion is monitored. The pH at which the emulsion is most stable is considered optimal. Now, on to globule size. The size of the droplets or globules in an emulsion is another key factor affecting its stability. Smaller globules increase the stability as they resist coalescence and sedimentation. To measure globule size, techniques like microscopy, light scattering, or even laser diffraction can be used. The aim is to achieve a uniform and small globule size for a stable emulsion. Lastly, let's talk about viscosity. Viscosity is a measure of a fluid's resistance to flow. In the context of emulsions, a higher viscosity often implies a higher resistance to droplet movement and coalescence, enhancing the stability. Viscosity can be measured using a viscometer. It's important to note that while a high viscosity can improve stability, it can also make the emulsion difficult to handle or apply, so a balance must be struck. So, as you can see, pH, globule size, and viscosity are not standalone parameters. They are intertwined, each influencing the other, all working together to impact the stability of an emulsion. By carefully evaluating and optimizing these parameters, we can create emulsions that are not only stable, but also suitable for their intended applications. Each of these parameters provides a different perspective on emulsion stability, enriching our overall assessment. Finally, we examine the redisparability of the emulsion and conduct stress testing. Redisparability, in essence, refers to the ability of an emulsion to regain its original properties after being subjected to stress. It's a key indicator of the robustness and stability of an emulsion. To evaluate redisparability, we first subject the emulsion to a stress, such as shaking or freezing, and then allow it to settle. We then carefully observe the emulsion to see if it can regain its original properties such as its phase, pH, globule size, and viscosity. If the emulsion can quickly and consistently return to its original state, we say it has high redisparability. Now, moving on to stress testing. Why do we conduct stress tests on emulsions? Well, in real-world applications, emulsions are often subjected to a variety of stresses, such as changes in temperature, pressure, and mechanical forces. Stress testing helps us understand how an emulsion will behave under these conditions and whether it will maintain its stability. There are different types of stress tests that we can conduct. For instance, temperature stress tests involve exposing the emulsion to a range of temperatures from freezing to boiling to see how it responds. Mechanical stress tests, on the other hand, involve subjecting the emulsion to forces like shaking, stirring, or centrifuging. Other types of stress tests include pH stress tests, which involve changing the pH of the emulsion, and osmotic stress tests, which involve changing the concentration of solutes in the emulsion. By conducting these tests, we can gain a comprehensive understanding of the emulsion stability under various conditions. It's like putting the emulsion through a rigorous workout to see how well it can handle the stress. Through redisparability and stress testing, we can conclude our comprehensive evaluation of emulsion stability. Now that we've explored the evaluation process of emulsion stability, let's summarize what we've learned. We dove into the fascinating world of emulsions, understanding their complex nature and crucial role in various industries. We explored phase separation, a critical factor in determining the stability of an emulsion. We also discussed the importance of pH, a key parameter that influences an emulsion's stability. We then ventured into the realm of globule size and viscosity, two interconnected elements that significantly affect an emulsion's overall behavior and stability. Our journey took us to the concept of redisparability, an essential attribute for ensuring the longevity and usability of emulsions. Finally, we delved into stress testing, a rigorous evaluation process that assesses an emulsion's resilience under extreme conditions. Remember, understanding emulsion stability and stress testing is vital across numerous industries. Subscribe for more because you won't find me later.